Wow. Hey, everybody. It's Dove from DKE Toys. Uh, I am here with Jenky and Scott Cherry and our guest, George Gaspar, Double G Toys. And we're here for the second Boba Fett uh, bootleg show. Boba Fett! Boba Fett! Where? Jesus. Um, and you might be asking, why do the four of us look so awesome good? and handsome? <laughs> well, if you watched past shows, um, looking? I got one of these in a collection. And uh, I was so enamored with the idea that someone somewhere with a job approved this as <laughs> because... Official. <laughs> not only does this not look like Han Solo or Harrison Ford, uh, speak for yourself. Us, I anyway, I had to. These are out of production. Um, I had. To, I, I found wonder why. <laughs> this one, what isn't was made in two thousand twenty one. I had to. I found them on eBay. A guy in Australia had them. <laughs> made from bought, real kangaroo. <laughs> and I bought enough of them um, for all of us. And uh, I did contact AFA and ask them if they would grade one. And they promptly emailed me back and said, no. <laughs> uh, I'll do it for you, Dev. I, I, hey, I guess my you. money ain't green here. Huh? But to the credit <laughs> of uh, CAS, um, they said yes. Yes! <laughs> so I'm sending one in. Awesome. Because... That is the finest Star Wars product I have ever owned, and pretty good. We're gonna have one itchy, sweaty yeah. episode here because great. Yeah, it really hey, does look like there's vermin just sitting on top of my head. I mean, <laughs> I just Janky, did you just say that your wife said that like she saw you in it and said, "Well, what's the difference between that and your regular hair?" I didn't. I didn't have it on yet. I just showed her the bag or the. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, "This looks like your normal hair." What? I was like, "Oh no, Scott, Scott, I can't get, I can't look at your box on the screen. He looks like yeah. Yahoo serious." Like, <laughs> I, was, I, I was wondering if it's better with like if I look like a Hasidic Jew if I just put the curls down, or if I should, you know, I don't know if better comes to mind with this. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, really I just. I wonder like, how much styling. I mean, that you look like Pippi Longstocking when you do that. <laughs> That's what I was anyway, doing. I think I look like Han Solo. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> dead on, dead on. Yep. I made the cat. I'm gonna do the castle run. Talking <laughs> twelve parsecs in like four minutes. <laughs> uh, uh, so the thing about the Boba Fett show is this is a, a show that's sort of in between our other shows, and I, I, I thought that maybe other people would watch this show except for the normal crew who watch this show because they're just into Boba Fett. But now we've scared them all away with these, <laughs> these rats on our heads. Anyway, so if you didn't catch the first Boba Fett show, and this is your first introduction to uh, what DKE Toys does... Um, is I think even though the it says bootleg, we don't sell bootlegs. We sell art, and that's plain and simple. Uh, a lot of people call what we sell bootlegs because uh, these artists borrow from pop culture, and they might look like uh, something that is not licensed. Uh, but mind you, what I'm wearing on my head is licensed. Um, <laughs> And For so, anyone that has any disparaging things to say about the bootleg scene, this is official. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, several times a year, we do conventions and artists make uh, exclusives for us, small runs of handmade figures, usually like 15, 20, you know, as high as 50, but generally not. Um, 
and they're all signed and numbered. They're all handmade. They're all conceptual pieces that they've created by a group of artists whose medium is the action figure. And so what we're going to show you today is uh, roughly 25 pieces out of the DK Toys archive um, that we've collected over the years. And you can try and take us seriously <laughs> or not. I mean, I don't know how you couldn't. <laughs> We look like magistrates. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we need. So we need little, like you know, fake uh, collars. Yeah. Is that it? Every right, every so... every Boba Fett episode, we're just going to add one new random piece to this until we have a complete. All right. So uh, these are no particular order. This is not a best of show. We have so many Boba Fetts. Boba Fett is a theme that. Virtually every artist in the in the scene has done a Boba Fett at one point or another, so I, you know that's don't think that these are in any order or there's any meaning attributed to the order. We just went through, picked a bunch out. Hopefully, we'll get to all of them. If you keep watching, we'll keep doing the show. Well, so, so even if you don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Four of us are just going to get together on a Thursday and look at Boba Fett's. <laughs> right. Uh, so this is Birch Fett by 1980 Who. I love this. And this one is all made out of wood. Laser cut painted wood. Um, and the blister has, is a laser cut, has a laser cut acrylic around it to hold it in place. And the, Yeah, there's like a laser cut flange that goes around the yeah and it's yeah. you can unscrew it and take can, it out yeah take it off just amazing but, and it's and it's, it's not just laser cut i mean it's laser cut it's like laser cut and layered it's almost like a puzzle he had to figure out right where it's yeah it's like the the, the, the toy is like there. yeah 80 different little pieces of wood that he put together that's insane God, he's insane that's yeah. so cool and for those of you that are new to this scene, I mean, most of the artists in the scene are insane because they <laughs> spend so much time, you know, casting and painting. And anytime we show you something and it says addition of 20 or addition of 10 or addition of 15, they had to make each one. These are not made in factories. These are just hand poured and in this case, hand cut. Um but the interesting tip that he told me, if any of you are laser cutting wood, is he paints the wood before he laser cuts it. And that's way he gets that burnt, the burnt edges. Oh, uh, yeah, a little singular. Otherwise, the, the, the burnt edge would go away after he stained it. Yeah. It's like, you know. I mean, look at the, the little details, like the knee pads, right? Like, instead of just coloring the knee pad yellow, he actually has layers of wood building up the knee pads and, and the... His little grappling hook thing. I mean, it's just the amount of thought and detail yeah. that goes into this is just bananas. So it's designed and handcrafted in California by 1980 Who. This collectible figure is intended for adults only. It contains small parts that are a danger to children. Da, da, da. And that's the thing. Most of these toys can't be played with, even if they're openable. They're just made out of resin, which is toxic. Uh, you don't want it in your anywhere near you. He, he's also a Disney animator. Uh, is he really a, a, a stop motion animator yeah huh. he he did he did uh there was like these uh disney stop motion cartoons yeah mm -hmm. he directed um, those nice uh another one of my favorite lines here um is from king spider toys in oh, yeah. canada and this one is called baku fett and he made this whole um, what do you call it? It's like like a Middle Eastern Star Wars. A middle of the Empire's onslaught. And this is Baku Fett. And then um, what is crazy is like all the characters on the back. Nice. I love that interpretation though, where he's taking like the symbol on Boba Fett's arm and modeling the helmet after that instead of just this, the old Boba Fett helmet. I, I really love this piece. I think it's fucking amazing. Yeah, it's cool. It, it, it's fantastic. And then the what is really amazing is the, the little card set that comes with it. Yeah. Wow, you made all the cards too? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, each one comes with uh I believe nine cards. Yep, because he knows how to fill a whole trading card. It's amazing. Yeah. If you're gonna fantastic. do one, do nine. Do nine. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's it. All right. Luke Tobias, who is is a painter himself. 
um, made this one. It's called Boba Sketch. Oh, and I know this one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's from the UK. I'm gonna just Wait, you it. didn't get that painting? I thought you did. I got his original painting that sort of like went viral. Was um, that the, the steampunky one for the first one you did with him? No, it was oh. pretty much this image, but he had done it years before and he repainted it for this figure. Gotcha. So I don't have this one, this version of it, but the one that sort of like made the impression online and, you know, everyone was like into like their hipster Boba Fett that was like had earbuds in and was, you know, just sitting there in a chair and with junk food and unemployed, I guess. Oh, Fet fetting it up. Just <laughs> fetting it around. I've never uh, but... related to Boba Fett more than <laughs> unemployed and junk uh, Fett. But the, the figure, you know, says his. Oh, uh, yeah. Ears. Yeah, his uh, Air Force ones. Great set of shoes there. Yeah. And then. Dude, Janky, look at that art piece behind you. What? Which, which one? The, the point break? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that awesome? Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> Sorry, back to this. <laughs> Sorry, I'll always take a pause to talk about Point Break. Yeah. <laughs> did you make that or did you find that somewhere? No, I found that. I, I bought it off the internet. Thank you, internet. Um, and then the last one of what I'm showing you today that's in stock is um, this is Broids uh, by Folklore Industries and General Porpoise. General Porpoise. And has the muscle motif here. And it's a ever expanding line of which many of these are on the site. And uh, if you ever need a, a Boba Fett that is surfs, you know, and comes in an openable package and well, there you go. <laughs> it's it's there. Beauty. If you ever need a Boba Fett that surfs, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I legitimately have Han Solo hairs like uh, wisping in my vision. As we're I, this. <laughs> this is uh oh, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is objectively awful, and uh, <laughs> I it's apologize. I don't know what in you advance. Guys do. I like it. All right, here's Victor's vintage, all the way from Iceland. Um, this is Turboba. <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> That's great. And the back is also. Oh my god. Hilarious. Oh my god. Oh <laughs> I mean the But the, the front, I just reading the, the front is booster. That dude's the best, man. I love that. Uh, it says uh on the on the front, it says Star Wars jingle is the way. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that before. That's, That's hilarious. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh Victor, really, you're a genius. Really Amazing. nice one. Um, not signed or numbered. Um, uh, I don't think we carried this one ever. Uh, I never. I don't remember ever seeing that in any yeah. of your stuff. So yeah. that's a that's a nice one. I saw it at Decon. I think that's the only reason I recognize it. He had it. On the yeah, stage. he had it at Decon. Yeah. Uh, this one is Carlos Ramirez, uh, formerly of the Date Farmers, who is a you know fine artist who shows work in galleries. Um, we have Malo right here. <laughs> I love his work so wow. much. And uh, I forgot how much these were. These were like a hundred bucks. It was addition of 30. I think it sold out in an hour. It was because the thing is about Carlos Ramirez, if you're not familiar, like you can't get him to do an original piece of art for you for a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. um, but what he did is he, um, he hand like crafted this Boba Fett out of whatever he used balsa wood and all sorts of pieces and parts. We had them cast in resin and then he painted them. And then he hand did every uh, card back. They're all the same, same motif, but they all have different like Disney stickers. And he signed and numbered them on the back. I feel like the Han Solo on the front of that card saw our wigs, and that's what got <laughs> scared. <laughs> Sorts of glitter and fun stuff. Um, yeah, I have one right here. This is a punk and pop shirt that's got a Boba Fett glued onto it oh that's awesome <laughs> no way <laughs> it says sell in case of emergency and then <laughs> and then it's crossed out it says play with in, in case of emergency wow oh, man that's then, awesome i never saw that and then yeah you can open it wow that's so cool dude that's incredible 
That's amazing. Do we have one of those? With with the, the pouch on it? Uh, no. Is it a hand wash? This, this is, is, one. This is it. yeah. This is dry clean only, so it's dirty. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Um. So the dude from Gypsy Oak, he kept, you know, he wanted to do something. He does a lot of trading cards and stuff, and he had this concept, and he's like, "I'm gonna get this thing made," and I had no idea like what he was gonna do, and uh, he does a lot of cool stencil work, and then. He, just in the mail showed up these (laughs) and i think he made the figure out of enamel pins yeah wow and bolted them together and then he laser cut the card wow and and then stenciled the back jeez and we released this san diego comic-con 2018 and i believe is this russian i'm not sure I don't be remember better. that. I don't either. Better, better prepared. But yeah, sold out pretty quick. Wow. That's I, cool. Wow. That's a great idea with the enamel pins for limbs. Yeah. Um. All yeah, right. I so think that's big, pin, big pins, whatever big the hell they call it. Such <laughs> big pins. Uh, so during pandemic, uh, my son Samuel uh enthralled a group of artists sitting in our 20 hour long zoom as we're all delirious you know we set up the booth here and we basically there was no san diego comic-con that year so we just sat here live for the same hours that the show was like wednesday we were here from five to nine and thursday we were here from 10 to seven it was just insane we yeah. had nothing to do but you know just sit here and and people just sat and watched the show for 40 hours over five days it was insane and so at the end of the day samuel gets on zoom and it's a little wild and i don't know how it came up or who suggested it but he just said hey do you want me to draw boba fett for you and like i don't at the end of the day i'm not sure who's left there's maybe like 10 artists like in the chat still hanging out and then he begins to draw Boba Fett. And he starts with the circle and then he moves to this and then he goes to that. And then by this point, he's like, you see, it kind of looks like he's got underwear on his face. (laughs) And then he got to that and everyone's like, oh, now I can't unsee that. (laughs) And so how old was he at the time? What year was that? That was... I mean, it was 2020, right? That was 2020. Those came out in 2021. Okay, yeah. 2020 is when we did that, is when he was teaching us how to draw Boba Fett. Got it. So he was about eight, seven, I don't know. And what we got from him is underpants, man. (laughs) (laughs) And this little dude made 40 of these fucking things, and they all sold. In fact, it was the first sellout, wasn't it? What the hell? So each one has Boba Fett thinking of something, and he came up with all of his themes. Like he was thinking about Lego, or thinking about Minecraft, or thinking about the beach, or you know what? Thinking about baseball, whatever he was into, he was. But for some reason, there were a lot of. He wanted to do them all. Boba Fett thinking of pink underwear, and then Sarah <laughs> and I were like, "Yeah." He's like, "Why can't I do them all?" It's like. If you do one or two, that's fine. If you do 40 of them like that, people are going to think there's something wrong with you. And he's like, I don't get it. It's like, don't worry. You'll get it later, huh? So this is how to draw underpants, man. And then uh, James Hakola uh, sculpted a piece of underwear there onto uh, Boba Fett's face. And Samuel sat and hand-painted all of those little white... Uh, he's like, how many of these do I have to paint? And he's just like, wow. The, the tortured life of an artist hand exactly Eddie Whitey is on a super my, face. my favorite part is how he runs out of room and the, the letters start getting smaller and smaller yeah. and then the pass is underneath yeah. Yeah. I think uh, all had, of mine have typos nice uh, <laughs> he good. had uh, he had two follow ups he did butt face man which was uh, a, a walrus man and then he did Toilet Paper Man, which was Dengar. Um, that was a lot more painting for him, just trying to paint all of that toilet paper that James had sculpted all around Dengar. It was like, it's kind of a thing. But um, by the time we had gotten to 
Dengar, he was like nine years old. And I'm like, okay, show me how you're going to draw it. And then his drawing style had totally changed. He's older, right? And then it's not this like Crayola marker, broad strokes. It's sort of like, you know, he's just sort of like, you know, a lot of detail and lines. And there's like, I, I don't know. And I was like, that's not going to work, man. It's like, this is a trilogy. And I, I had to explain to him, it's like, you're the Eagles and you're playing Hotel California. Like people want your hits. You can't just say like, well, gee, you know, we're going to do rave music this time. Right. It's like people not into it. And then he's like, yeah. I don't know. This isn't my style. I don't want to do this. And I was like, look, dude, this is a job. You're going to get 10 bucks each. Do you want the job or not? And he's like, yes. And then he said, <laughs> he did them all. <laughs> no, so, nothing will teach you. Nothing will teach a 10 year old a lesson, like an Eagles reference too. Like, yeah. Really, hey, really yeah, yeah. All over those. You just, you Dad, just told I young really Luke Chu want... to only draw a bear over and over. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you can only draw this bear for the rest of your life. <laughs> All right, this is an early one. What year was this? Uh, this is from Credenda. Yeah, this is Freddie Fett. And this started a, a 2015, 2016. Wow, this is going to be 10 years old the next year, maybe. Uh, and he did a complete line of all the re release. <laughs> That's what happens. Yep. Uh, really exceptional. And uh, his, the paint job is. It's out of control so great it's unbelievable that that made it onto the resin masters poster yeah oh fit. yeah um then one of uh killer bootlegs early uh characters um was it before phantom star killer i don't remember um uh, but he did uh the frankenfett mm -hmm. and frankenfett has come over come out numerous times um this is one version that he did on a silk screened acrylic card, but you can yeah, see it's a cool. Frankenstein head on a uh, Boba Fett body. And then this was another release. Came in a little, oh, that's with cool. a little rocket fire and Fett. And this, what year is this? 2016. And he's had other releases of that through the years. Um, a but bunch, then yeah. Thing from, Buzzard Guts, to sort of riff on what Peter was doing, instead of doing Frankenfett, um, he did uh, Boba Stein. Boba Stein. Because <laughs> why not? And I believe this was New York Comic Con. And I'll tell you, man, um, I love this figure. It's got glow-in-the-dark silkscreened ink. Wow. It has a reference to Sucklord on the back. Uh, it was assigned a numbered edition of 30. But man, I can tell you that the horror reference, or for whatever reason, just didn't didn't work. And we sold like five of them, maybe, and then the rest just sat. And mm. so he got frustrated. And what he did is uh, he had his Riot Scum, uh, you know, punk rock band figures, his... All he did was uh, he ripped open all the packages that were left. So if you have a Boba Stein, it's actually very rare. There might only be four or five out there in the world wow. because the the rest of the 30 pieces got turned into uh, what's this? Oh, the Riot Scum, and it says Boba Stein R.I.P. right there. <laughs> so they got repackaged as... Uh, Drummer Memorial Series One. I mean, it is tricky when like the most memorable part of both of those characters is their head. So true. Uh, when, you know, swapping the Frankenstein with the Boba Fett. But, so there's there's more uh, Riot Scum figures out there than the the glow in the dark one, and I I don't know I like the glow in the dark one. But did hey, sell that in that new package? Yeah, we sold out. Yeah. I mean, Weird. there you go. <laughs> look, ev eventually everything sells. The the editions are just too small, right? So, and sometimes an artist says, like, you know, they make twenty pieces and only ten sell, and then they're like, "What's going to happen?" And it's like, you just wait, and then they just trickle out until they're gone, and then once they're sold out, they're always on eBay for two or three times what they came out at. So, it's sort of like this 
and there's sort of like a, a curve to it, like a lot cell in the beginning, and then it's sort of trickle, trickle, trickle. And then when you're down to two or three, they sort of disappear very quickly. And then, you know, I don't know. I haven't, I've bought back a lot of collections. I haven't gotten a Freddy Fett back in. Yeah, Credenda oh. stuff does not show up very often at all. Well, Boba Fett's in general, just I don't get a lot of Boba Fett's back. Can you show, can you show they, Peters again that the, the first, uh, the one on the acrylic, acrylic card? Because <clears throat> we talk a lot about packaging and keeping figures in place and i just noticed this what peter did here with like this almost credit card slot auction option here of putting the little sure like tent uh, um, in there to, to keep the boba fett from wiggling around that's a that is something borrowed from kenner oh is it okay well look yeah. at me not knowing my history there are some <laughs> some figures over the years that did Weeks come <laughs> yeah and skateboarding that's called swiping the credit card and the skateboard <laughs> goes right up between your butt Oh no. <laughs> um all right. And then there's Bobo Cop by Cat the Caterpillar here. Yeah, Just... Bobo Cop. <laughs> uh, fantastic edition of 20. Um just the they really got a nice chrome on there. And yeah, really on good. the card. It's fantastic. And then the so... bootleg version of that would be Robert Fett. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! You have to make that now, Bobert. Bobert cop. <laughs> uh oh! And then there's the not safe for the world. Um, wow! And we just jumped right into it there. Oh, did we just? Yeah, oh, you're just holding it right up. <laughs> yeah, you might. You might have to. You might have to blur that one. Oh, there's um, no the, might about it. That's gonna get. <laughs> that's, uh, so <laughs> if we want our channel to stay up. So uh, only Yoli uh, Yolanda made um, boner fet here. Which uh, is, you know, Boba Fett with a big boner. But I the Rock back. I, <laughs> big <laughs> fucking erect penis. With a weapon this powerful, the whole universe is at his mercy. Holy shit. Mando's back in heat. The well-endowed bounty hunter. Um, the I can't even read you what's going on on the back here. You're going to blur it anyway, but it just. Wow. That is well, on the front maybe, of it, it's, it's, maybe our wigs do look like that. That <laughs> I think it's perfect. I mean, yeah. Uh, um, hey, what are you going as for Halloween? Yeah, boner fat. Um, and this piece right here is uh, the Healy Maid. What's this character called again? Hooded 3.75. Yeah, but he's got another name Raider. How can you remember the, everything? The Raider, yeah. Right? This is the Raider. Oh, is that yeah. not a Glyos one? That's a resin one? This is actually the first version of it. Oh, and, cool. And one of a very few carded versions that he ever did. He generally stays away from carded stuff. Um, he had this great die cut packaging with the silver foil, the prism. Uh, but yes, this is a handmade resin piece and sort of like, I would say a grail for most Healy made collectors don't know his work you should check it out because it's fantastic but it's always like quality like the packaging is always top notch like the yeah. paint's always really good like yeah uh and then rika did uh the holiday special <laughs> which is just uh, those are the easiest thing in the world so card that bouncy ball he had to make these custom blisters with what it's like a little umbrella that comes in your drinks wow Pretty yeah great. fantastic piece beautiful uh-oh and then this guy called me one day he was like hey you want to sell a figure i'm like sure he's like you can't tell anyone who made it i'm like okay and i'm like what company do do we credit it to and it's he says hello dolly pie and this was <laughs> Bulb Who would make this? I don't know. <laughs> I'm guy wearing a Han Solo wig. <laughs> you get a one three <laughs> shot here. <It's... laughs> uh, figures great. Look at that. So and then, great. um, look at that little Pokeball back there too. I... <laughs> That's I didn't notice that before. That's awesome. <laughs> and then, where's the rest of the line, dude? Uh, it turns out it sucks to make hand painted figures. And I <laughs> <love people. laughs>
Uh, I think when uh, you were living in LA, you came and raided the warehouse here and pulled a lot of uh, carded Power of the Force, just card packs. And then what'd you do? You glued your card to these? Yeah, just created the created the back that would fit it and then just had to cut the paper. Fantastic. Bulba fit. There awesome. you go. Yeah, it was uh that was back when I had Toy Break and I used to talk a lot of shit about making Boba Fett stuff. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so and then to go and make a Boba Fett thing, it, it wasn't me trying to like prove that I could like the thing is everybody makes a Boba Fett and then they're like I'm an artist. My figure sold. It's like, no, Boba Fett sold. It had nothing to do with you. Uh-huh. So, like, I was trying to show that. And D- all did of them it work? sold. Yeah, it sold. Yeah. yeah. Of course. They all sold because it's fucking Boba Fett and Pokemon. It had nothing to do with me. I'm not well, this amazing artist. Didn't you make a pin of the Chewbacca one, too? I did, yeah. Yeah, there was yeah, a okay. Chewbacca got made and the, and the Death Star Pokeball got made as well in the hey, pin. I- it's a pretty good figure. I'm yeah. happy with it. I, I'm oh, yeah. stoked with it. And it's Thanks like, the, look, the we look, we look for the, is... the puns, right? The, the the Boba Fett jokes. Boba Fett's a pretty damn good pop culture pun. Pokey Wars. Can, the power can I inside. say that I, I have abstained from making any Boba Fett toys. I have too. Me too. I've, I've still... <laughs> <laughs> Molly never... Dolly Wally Pies or whatever made that one. <laughs> ne- never made one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Same. Will even made me a logo for that for that uh, Hello Dolly Pie logo on there and everything. Wow! <laughs> it was an Instagram. I went the, the whole H- hunt the whole nine yards. Yeah, uh, the- <laughs> HDP, that one right there. No, well, there's one on the back too with the like. I think there's one on the back with the actual like doll and the pie. Is that on there? <laughs> no, I'm, all right. It might just be on the Instagram. No, it's it, we use it on the member berries too. Oh, that's right. The oh, member- right, the member berries. Um. And then Buzzard Guts back again with, um, I'll let you guys say it. <laughs> I love this one. What is it? Bubba Fett. Bubba Fett. Nice. Bubba Fett. And the thing is, when you look at it, you're like, Bubba Fett. What is that? And then you have to like say it a little faster. You're like, Bubba Fett. And like, oh, okay. The <laughs> Cajun bounty hunter. The episode, the the Toy Geeks episode where, where we premiered this, yeah, it, all of us are just like, I don't get it. I don't, and we're saying it over and over and over again. And then Bubba finally, Fayette. one of us heard the other one saying it. We're like, oh my god, okay, there it is. That's and that, and then pretty goddamn got good. It. And then the the background it says "Free the Swamp Wars Playset." And just look at the back. <laughs> That's neat. So good. Yes, and Dane. Oh, some Dane. Um, all right, so Dead Greedy did the Maryland Mandos. And let's see if, um, <laughs> this Andy Warhol inspired. Uh, but the thing is, uh, he did uh, six wow. of them. Wow, cool. And uh, I had to buy all six. That's why was he did it only six, or was there six, and then there was like a bunch of each of the six. I don't know. I think he only did six. And you just bought the whole set. Someone needed rent money. All all of the backer cards make up a picture as well. Oh, wow. That's cool. On the back, I mean. So you can lay them all out. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. That's a lot of work. But, I mean, really fantastic, you know, conceptually, just like this Andy Warhol. There's six of them. Uh, It's called Marilyn Mando right there. The signature. That's awesome. <laughs> what does it say at the bottom? Serving Earth and Uranus. <laughs> there you go. Wow. God, like making wow. puzzle fit hard or like getting getting paper to fit together with an image is not easy. So that's uh that's especially putting that stuff together, you need some sort of bleed. Yeah. So yeah, that must get, have been a pain to get that butt. to fit. Yeah. Uh, this one's f- fantastic. This is by uh, Wetworks. Um, I wish I knew which country Wetworks was from. I think they're in Asia. Um, it is called The Hunter Chronicles of Bobette. It's, uh, <laughs> it says artwork by Carlos Ruiz. It did this fantastic piece I've never seen that before. Wow. wow. 
Yeah. And I'm going to attempt to crack this open here. It's a resealable blister. No, it's not. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> Just look at that figure. Is that resin? Wow. Yeah, it is resin. Wow, that's, that's beautiful. And it has the little... Uh, comes with a, a little itty bitty toy uh, slave one. <laughs> and then I guess this guy fits in right here. That's really cool. Oh, uh, that's really neat. Yeah. Uh, I like works, them a lot. We have a few wet works pieces in the collection, and it's just really awesome. Wow. I don't know if people do their own sculpt of the thing instead of just. Yeah. It. Yeah. It's just completely yeah. original um, artwork on the back. I guess it's a remote control. He's holding a remote control. He's flying the ship. Oh, That's so okay. cool. I'm really impressed by that one. Yeah, yeah I really, really like that one. Whatever a lot. that ship's called, he's flying it. You get the, the the not not slave one. The not slave one, right? <laughs> um, all right, then this one is uh, legendary ace by Starvenger, um, who also known as Magitarius, and. I uh, did this uh, this run of all of the bounty hunters, and they're all these like double cast. Double cast, yeah, they look awesome. And uh, and the, the card art is Tracy, right? His yeah, Tracy yeah. did all of the card art. Uh, I believe he did a complete set of all. Did did we have a complete set of all? Of, did he make extra Boba Fett's? Yep. Yeah. There was so a set of six and then the Boba Fett separately. God, so this one's numbered out of five. So I think there's five sets of all the uh the the bounty hunters. Is that right? Yes. And then I different think different paint application on Boba Fett, I think. So different it, it just sold sold too quickly and there's more demand for Boba Fett only. So I think we probably made how many did you make? Another 10, 15, 20? Something like that. Are you trying to tell me that Boba Fett is more popular than Dengar? Oh man! <laughs> How dare you, sir! Fantastic figure. Um, let's see the Battle Tribe Merc Raider by Rendar Art. There's this piece here. His, the details he does wow. on his yeah, Matt Rendar and... his Battle Tribe figures are fantastic. Um, always. Um, he is a. a Can you zoom in on that little like Leia drawing in the in the corner there? <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. If if um, you guys so... haven't watched his interview on the DKE interview feed on our channel here, you should go do it because he's fast. what's his name? Matt Rendar or Matt Rendar? Yeah. Um. He's uh. He was a. Uh. He's a vet. He served, I forget, he said in the video, was it like one or two tours in Iraq? Two tours in Iraq. And then he became, uh, but he knew how to draw. He became a police officer, a New York police officer. And then when the guy retired who did like the the wanted sketches, the he, became, he became the, the New York police department sketch artist. And so he would, uh, but his attention to detail. Yeah. His, figures and it's i amazing. love this yeah just yeah. fantastic work yeah killer and his stuff sells out immediately usually like it pops up and just disappears what else we got uh oh we got ronald fett uh the note here ian says i made up the name <laughs> <laughs> because so this showed up from a poxy crusader in mexico nice wow. little thing with these little like foam French fries, and then out comes this little McDonald's. Wow! <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a plastic. That's it's, awesome. It's, it's a resin figure, just hand painted. That's but funny. The package is Happy hilarious. Meal Head. Yeah. yeah, and and then what's inside? Oh, there's a gun and a sticker inside in that little bag. Wow, that's awesome. And it delivered all the way from Mexico in a McDonald's package. Nice job, Epoxy. Yeah, really cool. Does it smell like fries? Does it? Get... I don't want to smell. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> um, all right. And then the last one of the day I just got recently. I was 
really tickled by this one is uh, Army Builder Fets uh, by Plastic Vomit Customs. And it's just this bag. Wow. <laughs> How many are in here? Two, four, five, I don't know. Maybe there's ten. <laughs> wow. It's just fantastic. It's just like Army That's Builder Fets. more than ten. Is it? Has a lot of fets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Yeah, it's about ten, maybe twelve. Yeah, plastic vomit customs, fantastic. Uh, he did another one that was amazing. I didn't get it, but it, he made the little uh, Godzilla, you know, the Shogun Warrior Godzilla, no. and cast them in green, like you know, an inch tall, and there was a bag of like a dozen of them or ten of them, oh, wow. which was. Amazing. Super cool. So that's are, those, it. are those 3D printed? Are those resin 3D printed? I think those are... I mean, they're cast. cast. Wow. I, yeah, these look cast. So how he, I don't, such a pain in the butt. I don't know how he got this shrunk down, but that'd be an interesting conversation to have with him, but huh. probably still available. So Very cool. What's very the name cool again? Indeed. Uh, plastic Vomit Plastic customs. Vomit, yeah doing some great work yeah yes i have some uh, <laughs> over here I'm not gonna show you. <laughs> the wigs and, and, anyway that, that's 25 boba fets for episode two here um i don't know how much there's more a time thousand we, more to go yeah we can keep going on forever but we don't want to bore you to death and i i'm like itchy and sweaty and this I'm is getting real itchy yeah <laughs> Yeah, I didn't so, think it was gonna bother me, but here we are. So, <laughs> suckers. I I think we can safely say that not only is this a horrendous licensed product, um, it is just also in in the way that it it looks. I mean, it looks terrible. I, I want to find. I want to find out. Like, I don't know, Dave. Your side profile from out here looks like it's normal. Look, oh yeah, that's your I mean, you look like Han Solo the most out of all of us. For sure. Wow, <laughs> thanks a lot with is the this, beard and glasses. Is this that's high school good. Dove? Is this what Dove looked like in high school? With like, yeah, the... I I really want to call Ruby's and I want to try and find this actor <laughs> because there's got to be I, a way to find it. It doesn't because... look like he was actually there though. I mean, that wig looks photoshopped onto his head. Yeah. <laughs> really I don't know, <laughs> but um, I just think that this is so terrible that I need someone to make a figure of this Han Solo oh, guy with, with this wig and I want to track this guy down and have him sign them because oh man I think uh, I, I want to make trading cards with him I want to just <laughs> this, this dude winner it could, it could be our first uh, DK Toys TV documentary where we have a whole like expose wow. on the the Ruby's Ruby's solo wig I mean, that's... I do wish I had this much hair. I would definitely do this with it. That's, that's... <laughs> <laughs> you would definitely do this with it. Wow. Well, that's good to know. Um, it's it's nice that we can like style it. You know, it's really got some that volume. A volume, yeah. So... I would. I sell mine as screen used, but this is going into the collection. This is. Uh... Yeah, do we need to send these back, Dove? Or they're yours. <laughs> you don't want all the sweat and <laughs> no. We're gonna just dry clean them and just. <laughs> George looks work. like looks like a beetle. <laughs> yeah, Ringo. beetle mania. Yeah. I don't know. Or an Amish person. I don't know. Yeah, I think I had it on backwards that whole time. This is probably the way it was supposed to go. <laughs> I don't know. We've we've had some pretty low points in this show. I I don't know if we've eclipsed it. <laughs> Episode thirty-two, maybe. <laughs> we, we <laughs> most like, most people would have went for, hey, let's all get Boba Fett helmets while we do the Boba Fett show. But <laughs> no, no. I, Next I, time, it's Princess Leia bikinis for everybody. This I'm is in. more like Boba Fett, like helmet hair. You know, like when he takes the the helmet off. <laughs> <laughs> He's been this jetpacking like, around the galaxy. Like, and... God damn, it's hot in that fucking thing. <laughs> Uh, I yeah. Anyway, uh, Janky, tell people where they can find you. Uh, you can find me at Janky Toys on Instagram, and very soon I will be launching 
a whatnot channel with some original art cards and stuff. So uh, called Into the Jankyverse. So information about Ooh. that will be on the at Janky Toys Instagram. So find me there. And Scott, where do we find you? Brainrage.com. And George, where do people uh, want to find you? At Hello Dolly Pie Toys. <laughs> <laughs> uh no uh, uh it's double g toys on instagram um if you search on youtube if you want to get another show that's wacky and weird uh go search for purple gang gang and uh, i think it was episode 19 i was just on their show and man it is a a wild ride their show it is yeah. like the adult swim uh live like they shoot it live and it's really? they edit in clips wow. and videos and weird things and You'll have a good time. Awesome. More wild than this. Hey. Uh, this is this this would fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, make sure to follow us uh, at DK Toys on Instagram. That's where we post all of our news. Uh, follow us here on YouTube at DKE Toys um, at DKToys.com. If you go to the store, if you buy something, and you put DKE Toys TV in the notes section. We will send you this free invisible suck lord figure. You still Very... got some of those to send out free? And we sure do. That's crazy. How's that not so, gone by now? I you know what? They were inexpensive to produce. We got enough people are putting that code in. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta fill that spot in the warehouse with Han Solo wigs. So I stuff people. I can't wait yeah. to know what yours comes graded at. Like it's <laughs> That's got to be on when we do when it comes back, right? You're oh, have... it will be. It will oh, be proudly yeah. displayed, yes. like, you know, for all to see. There's different grading companies that'll tell, like, do stuff. There's two major ones. Uh, Is AFA... one better than the other, or like AFA's been around the longest? Uh, CAS came along a little bit later. There's another company in the UK called UKG. Um, it, currently, and it's things change at the moment. AFA's value is generally higher but give or take um uh the thing about cas is they'll grade a lot more stuff and they're a lot more <laughs> they are they're, they're a lot more creative in their displays and will make beautiful custom displays like if you wanted all six bounty hunters like uh afa is going to just grade your figures the way you know they always grade them but uh, CS, I think if you wanted all six in a display, they would grade them all and just make a custom case for you. You know, if you wanted them with uh, a used card back, you know, they'll put that in there for you. Like they have, uh, they take people who have those cut figures, you know, when the, mm -hmm. for some reason, someone just cut the card, but the figure's still sealed. Um, they've just done a lot of really creative stuff that people over there, you know, really know how to work with the, uh, with their acrylic so the thing i don't like about all the grading stuff is that they charge differently depending on the value of the item you send in right like if it's a 10 it, they charge you more than if it's a seven like i don't like that like well and if, if i send in my my mint 10 modern comic book from last week it costs x amount if i send in my mint 10 uh walking dead number one or whatever it's going to cost a percentage of the market value as opposed to yeah, like that's three dollars or yeah, that seems sure. shady to me. It's the same amount but, of work to grade it. <laughs> like, um, sure, but yeah, I, I don't have a good defense for that. It's just imagine if you were in that business but, and you're gonna. Well, first of all, there is the insurance and the handling issue. So, if you have your staff handling a comic book that's worth a million dollars versus handling a comic book that's worth 10 bucks i have to probably imagine that your insurance and the the precautions that you have to take are uh pretty different but i think it becomes it becomes a conflict of interest because if i grade something at 10 and it's not worth a million dollars and mm. i get 10 percent of that or I grade oh, it. Yeah, but eight, it's not ten. It's, it's not ten percent. It's like right. It's like two or three percent. Whatever you know? it is, but you get a higher percentage based on the quality of the grade. So you feel like there's got to be some element on more expensive books of like at least the inclination to grade it higher because you would make more money off of getting it a higher grade, regardless of what the actual grade, quote unquote, would be. I'm Whoa. fascinated by grading. I'm not anti-grading. I'm really. 
like the whole culture around it is just sort of really fascinating to me you know everything in collectibles is perception yep and uh the reason anything is worth anything is because other people want it or think it's worth something i mean you know the that's why cryptocurrency is worth something and that's why the us dollar is worth something that's why gold is worth something i mean it has um you know a value for gold and silver and platinum have a value for electronics and engineering it is a commodity that is used but its value is not based on that you right. know it's its value is based on people thinking that that is a place where they can store their money and and gold's at an all-time high right now like it's like you know i growing up like gold was like five hundred dollars an ounce now it's twenty five hundred dollars an ounce twenty four hundred like it's it's out of control and uh but that's just because that's just supply and demand and uh, you know gold there's... Effect, coming soon yeah <laughs> yeah gold effect gold effect <laughs> is what it is all right well thank you everybody uh i think we've uh sunk to a new low and if you've made it this far, then so wigs off you. to you. Thank you. Yeah. Just wait till the next one. We're going to be wearing a Han Solo Merkin. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are wearing wigs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great night. Talk to you later. Later on. Bye-bye. Thanks for Bye. having me. Stay fresh, cheese bags.